the doctors did explain why things aren't focusing, and that's because of the swelling, I guess, behind my pupils. And so because of that swelling, um, I can't focus on things, uh, or things don't become clear. And so uh, my glasses, sometimes they help a little, sometimes they get worse, so um, one of those lines. So please bear with me, and, and if I read a wrong word, believe me, it's, it's not intentional, okay? And appreciate your kindness and your uh, patience with us during this time. And uh, uh, I said, it's such a wonderful thing. And we don't realize that we lose it, just what we had, you know? And so anyhow, as we get into the scriptures, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. And the title of the message, it's, well, it's pretty much in here as we get to reading the scriptures, but the God-filled man, okay? And, and to say it more politically correct, uh, the God-filled person, okay? And, uh, but we want to refer to that because it's so important. That people are full of all sorts of things. You know what I'm saying? And so you may be full of baloney right now. But anyhow, what I'm saying is just all sorts of things. And, and you think of all the things that we've heard this week, all the news we've heard, and some news we don't know. Do we really believe that or should we believe that? Or can we believe that? And uh, I, I read a report this last week, and it said that the media, uh, only 7% trust them completely now. Uh, and so I think that's good in one sense because I think they, they definitely warranted us not trusting them. And so it means that people are apparently getting their eyes open to the fact that the media does not tell the truth. And so, again, uh, a lot of people are filled with bad things. And again, maybe if you please corrupt news, uh, they're filled with other things, uh, ideologies and so forth that uh, are contrary to God's teachings. And we could go on and on, all the things that people are full of. And uh, so again, as we look here in the scriptures, God tells us clearly that we can be full of his spirit. And think of the difference it makes if we've got God's spirit in us. It can keep us safe from all the other things that are happening around about us. And it can help us to be uh, joyful. It can help us to uh, understand things and discern things in a better way when we've got God's spirit working in our lives. And again, everyone that's trusted the Christ the Savior, you have the spirit of God. There's no question about it. But it's sad that so many times we limit God and yet, as it says here in the scriptures, that we can be full of God's spirit. So, again, we make the choice. God doesn't say, okay, you're going to be full of my spirit. <laughs> and you're suddenly full of the spirit. It's a matter of you saying, okay, God, I want to be filled with your spirit. And God, I'll separate myself from all these other things. I'll get all these other things out of this vessel here so that you can completely fill it. And that's what we want to talk to you about tonight. And so, again, maybe I'm just preaching to myself. I think not. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, as we look here, let's begin reading in Ephesians chapter 3 and uh, verse 16. And uh, as we begin, notice what it says here in God's word. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And again, there's so much in that verse, and we'll come back and try to explain so in a moment. But again, I want to make just a couple notes that he would grant you according to his riches. Uh, could we ever borrow too much from God? <laughs> could we ever bankrupt God? Could we ever get to a place where God says, don't, just don't ask for any more. I've already given you too much. <laughs> and, and yet, in reality, I think in so many ways, he has given us so much. And it's sad that many times... We don't recognize God for all the things that he has done for us. And, and folks, maybe we just think in terms of things that could have happened to us that didn't happen. We can see again how God has given us his richness. But it says, grant you according to the riches of his glory. So you think of heaven and all that we have in heaven. But when you think of God and all that God has and that he wants to give to us, he says to be strengthened with the might by the spirit. So... The word spirit, if you notice it, is capitalized, so it's referring to God's Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the part of the Trinity. And so it makes it very clear that we're strengthened and filled with that spirit within us. It says, in the inner man. And so, folks, that's, that's talking about the inner person, that he can completely fill this vessel. And, and again, when he fills us, if you please, we have the strength of God. 
And with the strength of God, it's amazing the difference that you can make in this world. And I say you, and again, don't misunderstand me, is what you can do when God is working through you, when you allow him to work through you. And then notice verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And folks, how do we get saved? It's by faith. We accept what God has done for us. We ask him to forgive us our sins and to move into our heart. And so notice very clearly so that he may dwell in our hearts. But then again, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. God is love. No question about it. But we as Christians should be a demonstration of God's love. And people should be able to see that we do love each other, even though we may be totally different and we may not agree with everybody else's opinions and we may not even agree with everybody's theology here in our church. And, and basically, I think we're all pretty straight and pretty close, uh, but we still need to love each other. And folks, I'm going to go ahead and say this, and it may not be politically correct, but I'm really trying hard to love our president and the vice president and uh, the speaker of the house and so forth. Uh, and I can tell you this, God loves them. And so if God loves them, we need to love them. And uh, again, it, it's one I said, and I wish I could just go ahead and say, I really love our president. I, I, I hope the day's come when I can say that clearly. I really love our president, but I am commanded to love him. You understand? And so again, uh, I definitely could say I don't agree with the president, but you ready for this? He doesn't agree with me. Uh, in that profound, but anyhow, at that profound state, let's read all of the above, okay? It said that we're being rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height. And again, just, just how deep is God? Just how wide is God? How high is God? You know, and again, we can say clearly he fills the whole universe. And yet in a strange that uh, in one sense that he's chosen not to fill us unless we let him, unless we request it and yield to him. And so all these things said, notice verse 19, and this is our text, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. And again, so much in that one verse, verse 19, I and mean, that's basically, like I said, where we're sending our message at. But as you make in terms of it, it says, to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. There's no way that I got it now. I know exactly how much God loves. <laughs> you know, I, I got it now. I can understand how God loves me. I, I got it now. I, I can understand how God loves uh, the president and all the other politicians in the world. I, I got it. Say that, but I think y'all know I'd be stretching it a little bit, and I don't want to lie, and yet I'm commanded to love. And so, folks, we are to love this world, but it says it passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, think about it. To be filled with God, isn't that exciting? To think that we could be used in Ways by God in such a way that we can literally become his hands. We can literally become his mouth. We can literally become, he plays his eyes and, and his heart. All those things should be manifested in us. Now, it's one thing to preach this, folks. But it's another thing to practice it. And, and yet, God makes it as applicable as it possibly could be for us personally to do it. And I can tell you, I want you all to be filled with the Spirit of God. And, and I really do but folks, it's something, again, it, it's up to you to determine, well, you know, I, I can give God this much space in my heart, but, you know, I need to keep something for myself. You know, I need to keep something for my family. I need to keep some. you know, and we're going down the list. All the things that we might want to keep parts of our hearts. And it's amazing how many times we have been guilty of crowding God out of our heart. And folks, he should have the throne and everything in the uh, room of our heart if he please. But he says, verse 19 again, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. We just had prayer meeting. And uh, what a blessing is we got to hear a number of our folks' uh, word of prayers. And that's something that I missed for so many years. And uh, Brother Chuck's been here, I guess, as long as anybody, Brother Paul. Um, almost as long as uh, our family's been here. 
And of course, my kids have been here all that time. But all that said, uh, what, what comes across to me here is we look at this here, and uh, I think of all the times that we didn't get to hear our ladies pray. Can you remember those times for the hall? If the way the ladies pray, and what a blessing it's been to hear me pray. It's not that we don't think that y'all pray, because we just separate and go in separate rooms, and the ladies pray here, and the young people pray here, and the men who pray up here. And I enjoy those times too, and I trust y'all did also. But what I'm saying is it's nice to get to hear you pray. And so we uh, are excited about that. Uh, and again, we know that God works men, women, and children. Amen. And anyone that's willing to let him use them. And so notice what he says, according to the power that worketh in us. You know, it's not exclusive. And the power that worketh in the Baptist. <laughs> the power that worketh in the preacher. The power that worketh in uh, the, the, the pew setters. Or whatever. This is it's referring to all of us. So folks, we should all strive to, to get as much of God's spirit as we can in our life. And so again, that means that we have to uproot things in our life that keep God from being what we want him to be, or where he should be, I should say. But unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. And folks, there's a lot of things going on outside of the church. And some of those things are good, and some of them we refer to as the power, power church, and uh, but simply not the power church, but the power church. But simply, what we're saying is, it says clearly, it's to be done through the church. And so, again, if people don't have the blessing of the church upon their ministry, look out. It's not going to last. It's going to have some problems, have some difficulties, and there will be uh, things that will happen. And again, I'm not saying that the church is perfect. And we never have any problems here at Antioch. Everything is always perfect, especially the pastor. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, folks, uh, God said this to be done through the church. And you ready? There's not a single person in our church that's perfect. Now, my grandkids may be close, but they're not there. <laughs> well, what am I trying to say, folks? God says he uses the church. So we need to do our, our work, and we need to, if you please, do our giving to the church. We, we need to do our praying, if you please, in the church. And, and don't misunderstand. Yes, you can pray outside the church, and yes, you can give to the outside lines. But God says, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus, or Christ Jesus throughout all ages. That means we don't come to time, and, and I've heard people say, well, we're no longer in the church age. <laughs> Okay, you know, and uh, as you look at the scriptures, you see if there's an uh, age of the Jewish fathers, if you please, and, and you find that there was an age of the kings, and there was an age, and, and went through the various things and uh, different times that happened. But we are living what we refer to from the scriptures as the church age. And so unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. And again, that word glory, it always reminds me of heaven, I make with God's glory. And so people should be able to see it, if you please heaven within our church among our people and he said out of all ages referring to all time world without end amen so the church is something that will continue long after if you please the rapture takes place uh the church will have a part in god's economy and so all these things said the god-filled man so the, the main part if he plays in my message tonight is that you might be filled with all the fullness of God, that you might have what you need to make you complete. And folks, again, if we allow other things in, they may be good things, they may be wonderful things, but God is by far the best. And God will help us as we yield to him. So God knows exactly what you need to operate, and he can take care of all those things that he wants to. So when we look at all these things here, so many have limited the capacity of God in our lives. And so again, what I'm trying to say is if we fail to yield to God, then God can't use us like he wants to. And, and thank the Lord that he still uses us sometimes in spite of all of our, I'll say selfishness, in spite of all the things that, well, God, this, this is my life. And, and God, I enjoy this. And, and God, I'm just going to do it. I mean, I, I deserve a break. <laughs> okay. God, he wants to fill us. And if he fills us, you ready? There's going to be more love in our life. 
there's going to be more love in our life than ever before. If he fills us, we're going to be able to understand his word more than we've ever, ever understood before. And, and now we'll find a hunger to read God's word. And, and we'll truly look at it as a love letter from God. And folks, again, how important it is that we put God's word in the proper place in our life. But as we think in those terms, the God-filled man must be strong in a conscience ruled by the Spirit. Again, in verse 16, it says that he would grant you according to his riches of his glory to be strong, uh, strengthened with, with might and his spirit in the inner man. So God wants to take care of that inner man. He wants to fill us and use us in a way that would bring honor and glory to him. And folks, uh, have you ever been used you ever had somebody use you before? Okay, and, and we've all been used. And, and, and let me ask you, how many times did you really feel good when you realized that person used me? They <laughs> took advantage of me. I can't believe that happened. And, and folks, isn't it amazing how many scam artists we have out there today? Uh, and it's just amazing. I mean, if, if you look at your phone, there's probably not a person in here that doesn't get a scam call at least once or twice during the day. And maybe, maybe you get even more than that. And so what a tragedy that so many times we, we do get used and people take advantage of us. But as they take advantage of us, this thing in terms of would God ever misuse you? Well, I, I look for say head, head's not in her or something. You know? But God will never misuse us. Now sometimes he might stretch us a bit, and we all need stretching and, and folks. Uh, I guess in reality, that's kind of what exercises is. We're stretching this muscle or stretching this one or this one or maybe this one here. But anyhow, we're, we're stretching them and, and, and we strengthen them as we do so. And, and how many times are somebody just makes them, well, i got to get up and stretch the legs for you. You know, i got to get up and stretch or whatever. And, and there's a lot of truth to that. But what I'm saying is that God wants to stretch us, that God wants to use us for his glory. And again, how exciting that we can be used by him because he can give us strength that's from on high. He can give us strength that's uh, not from this world. He can give us strength that's not from the wisdom that we can find in this world, that's from God's wisdom. And so that's exciting. But God can help us and he can strengthen our conscience. He can help us so that our conscience uh, can be clear and, and not guilty feeling. And, and folks, you ever felt guilty? Uh, I have. Uh, you ever had times when you, you wished you could change certain things that had happened or you wished you could change something that you said or something that you did, and we all have. But what I'm saying is when we let God fill us, the inner man referring, if you please, to our conscience, then it's amazing what we can accomplish when our conscience becomes one with the conscience of God. Wow. I mean, isn't it fantastic when you think of that, what we are capable of seeing and witnessing happening? God can change our affections again toward the world and toward the Please, even our enemies uh, that help us, that we can have a right relationship with them. The God filled man is one whose heart abides and fills at home. Folks, you feel at home here in church? I, I hope you're at the right now. It's a little bit warmer, getting warmer. It's all my hot preaching, I guess, for me. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, I hope you feel at home here. And again, what I'm saying is when we're in a right position with God, we can go home in the place, even in the county jail. We can go home in the hospital. We can go home when we're not feeling good physically, when we're feeling sick. I appreciate uh, Lydia so much. She is so tough. And if you've ever uh, had any dealings with her, I know Jen's had a number of dealings with her for the years, and she's just told me that day, she said she's one of the toughest women or persons I've ever met or ever known, just amazing. And, and she is. But what I'm trying to say, it's so exciting when you be at home with God, even when you're in pain, even when you're hurting. And sometimes when things like that happen to people that have a right relationship with God, that, that sweetness or that love comes through them instead of bitterness and hatred because they're not feeling right. Because they know they're doing what God wants them to do. Uh, it's been interesting. And if you get a chance, uh, you can, 
I guess get online or follow the kids and, and see what's going on. But one of the things that they'll say is constantly, if you look at it, would you please pray for Miguel? He was with me in the hospital, such and such, and working at their hospital, and he got the witness to that he, he didn't accept Christ, but he was listening to soul folks. And then he read a little bit further on, and, and uh, uh, Jane came in, we were dealing with Jane, and there's Jane, and she was doing this and that. And uh, anyhow, she, she just, you know, she, she knows the Lord, but she's got away from the Lord, and would y'all please pray? And so what the, the matter doing, you ready? The mission field has suddenly become the medical world. Uh, and that's where they find themselves right now. And what's exciting is these people see them and they see their spirit and they see their attitude that they have and, and how easy they know it could be for them to be bitter because they've seen other people with lesser situations so bitter and mad at God and saying, if there is a God, why is he doing this to me? It don't make any sense. Why? It's there to go, God loves me and God loves you. And I'm going to heaven, and I sure like you to go ahead and look. And so just a completely different attitude to please that's going on. And so as we think of these terms, the, the God filled person, we see that they I, I, they feel at home wherever they're at, if they're full of God. And so again, it's very, very important that we let God fill us and use us. Again, we accept Christ by faith. But folks, we should live in such a way that we're living in God. We're living with Him, working through us. And again, uh, faith is something that we exercise when we receive Him. But to dwell in Him is something that we need to realize that whatever it takes, let Him control us. The God-filled man or person, if you please, must have the proper ideal of dimensions. And when I say that, uh, there's several places, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and other places that refer to, there's a heavenly level, and then there's a earthly level, and then there's one kind of image. And again, I'm not talking about purgatory, I don't misunderstand me. But Paul, one place, he talks about there's a terrestrial body, and then there's a heavenly body. And, and he goes through these different languages, referring to all the different phases that we will go through, uh, if you please, in our existence. But we have to remember that those that have died, they're in another dimension. But folks, they still exist. And again, remember that our dimensions interchange and go back and forth that constantly. The Bible says that we may entertain angels unaware. Uh, so again, we realize that there is a, a ladder and feelings that's coming back and forth, if you please. And so as we realize that, God says that we need to have the proper attitude and we need to realize that where we're at, God can use you here. In heaven, I don't know exactly what we'll be doing in heaven. I have some ideas. We'll definitely be glorified by God. And what will be amazing, I'll be able to sing, <laughs> uh, if you please, like an angel, literally. And how exciting that would be that we can all be able to sing. You ever hear somebody sing a wow? I wish I could sing like them or whatever. Well, in, in heaven, I, I guess we're all going to be, wow, listen to everybody. They sound so fantastic because they do. Because things will be perfected. But in this dimension, we may have to put up with a oh, squeaky voice, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, whatever. We'll have to put up with those things. But when we get to heaven, we'll be a totally different dimension. And, and another thing, we'll be able to hear it. And, and if you please, we'll be able to hear the, the spirit of the songs and so forth in a way that we've never heard them before. And yes, I think that we'll be able to feel them. You know, and again, there's so many things that we'll be able to experience that we can't experience here because we'll be in a different dimension. And if you please, it, it's a, a perfect dimension that has not been corrupted by Satan. Here we've been affected by the corruption, if you please, of Satan in this world, this fallen race. And so again, when we think in those terms, notice what it says here in verses 17 through 18, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. Again, how can we even begin to measure heaven? How can we begin to measure the love of God? How can we begin to measure that which is perfect? You know, I mean, it's just so many things that we, we just can't quite get across to you right now. But folks, I hope that you think of this message, that your desire will be to be filled with the dimension from above. 
that we should be living in a place for heaven and not this earth. And, and yet, so many times it's so easy to live for this earth because we can see, so to speak, the nasty now and now. Okay? We can see what's happening around us. We can see what everybody else is doing. And our tendency is to compete with the world instead of letting God take care of all those things. We are so limited, aren't we? So God wants to work through us. And I, I guess the point when I'm talking about the dimensions in the end, I, I, I don't want to put you off in the twilight zone, okay? <laughs> I don't go there, all right? But what I'm saying is, is simply, I, I think this year, I wrote this down, and uh, I, I was really excited as it was given to me, I thought, you know, from God. But God's God, God's thoughts become our desires. So what God thinks, I want to do. But then God's purpose becomes our purpose. You get what I'm trying to say now? What I'm trying to get across? And, and, and again, when this happens, it, it's so exciting because we belong to God. God created us. And if you please, most of the world is doing their own thing, so to speak. And when I say it, some might say, well, they're really doing the devil's work or they're doing the things of the world or whatever. They're doing their own thing. And all those things are true. But it's sad how many Christians are guilty of doing those same things too, even though we're Christians. And what's sad is we know better. And we know that God has a far better plan and a better purpose for us than we can ever find in this world. And how many people go, man, I just can't get any satisfaction. You know, it's not like a, was it the old Beagle song, the Golden Stones, and whatever. Just can't get no satisfaction. And folks, he won't. I don't care if you earn a million dollars. You're going to say, man, if I just had a billion. And then once you get a billion, well, if I could just have a trillion. And then you find that the person is never satisfied. And when they reach those various things, they just realize, what, what is it? I, I mean, I just knew I'd be so happy once I got this or got that. Folks, things cannot fill what God can fill. There's so much that God can give you that you can't find in anything else. And again, it's amazing because what God offers to us, it's free, and yet it costs God everything so we could have that freedom to have Him give us what we need to fulfill His will. And then the last thought tonight. The God-filled person must know the unknowable. Notice verse 19 again. It says, to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Okay. Uh, have you ever looked at a situation in your life and as you look at it and maybe you reflect on it, you go, I never thought that he and I would be friends, or, or she and I would be friends, or whatever the case might be. And yet, it's happened. Uh, I remember back in Bowie, uh, I remember these two men that they were basically enemies. Uh, they had had all sorts of problems with each other. Uh, one of them had been fired, and what happened, they worked oil field, and, and uh, the one they was working out in the oil field, and uh, the supervisor came by, which was this member of our church, and caught him out there drunker than a who dial. He's drinking vodka. And uh, anyhow, he just went ahead and he fired him. And so that man became really upset with him because he said, everybody else is drinking out there on the rigs too, but he comes and he fires me. That's not right. That's not fair. And we had a prince of leading him across. And, and what was so amazing, before it was over with, they were partners. They were working together, doing things that you couldn't believe. And God was using them to reach other people for Christ. I mean, just totally changed. I remember one man that came into our church, and he'd just been saved. Well, actually, he hadn't been saved at that time. But y'all know Vicki Reed. She's been here. I think a lot of you have met her. And they were here for uh, for Hannah's wedding. And uh, But anyhow, uh, what I'm saying is they were lost. And they came into the services, and, of course, uh, uh, Vicky was a Jehovah Witness, and Larry was a nothing, and he just made no bones about it. he was nothing. Only been church one time, and that time he was singing in, in the school choir, and they were invited by church to come and sing, and that was the only time he'd ever been in church. 
But what I'm saying is, when he walked into our building, and he looked in there and he saw that man that departed, and, and this is the man he didn't fire, but he remembered that man as a party man. Uh, his name was Bob Ford. And he remembered him as a guy that just, you know, really was always living it up and stuff and was known for being a heavy drinker and so forth. And uh, he, I say, a skirt chaser from the pulpit. But anyhow, that, that gives you an idea of the type of person he was. But folks, he got saved. And, and when uh, Larry Reed came in and he looked, he said, there was a guy there, and he looked a whole lot like uh, like Bobby Ford. And, but I know it couldn't be Bobby Ford. I said, no, that is Bobby Ford. Said, well, he looks different. He looks so different. And excited how God can change us and give us a totally new purpose and a totally uh, new uh, outlook on life that was totally different from before. And Bobby would always tell me, it's Bobby who went to be with the Lord here uh, just about six months ago. And he told me this. He said, you know, if you told me that I'd go to church, I'd say, what for? A funeral? A wedding? Why? And, and, and if, if you told me I'd be going to church on a regular basis, I, I'd go, not me. There's no way. That's never going to happen. And he said, and the reason I don't go to church is because I live a whole lot better than so many people in the church. He said, I stopped drinking. I stopped chasing women. I stopped he, he started. He said, I did it myself. So Christians, they, they, they tell me how God can help you with all these things, but then I look at them and they're doing the same things I was doing before I changed. So why should I become a Christian? <laughs> I'm so glad I said that you became a wonderful Christian. And uh, so excited as you watch that man become full of God's spirit. And as God worked in Bobby, I remember one time we were out making a visit and uh, we were out in the middle of nowhere. And Texas has a whole lot of nowheres. <laughs> and suddenly a, a truck, and you refer to the guy as a pusher, not a drug pusher, that's an oil field term. And a pusher went by, and all of a sudden Bobby says, I know you got this business, man, but I, 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 need, I need to see that guy. And so Bobby just took off as fast as he could and came on top of the guy and was blowing his horn like crazy. And so the guy pulls over, and he's like, what's wrong, Bobby? And Bobby said, I just got saved and I'm going to heaven. Are you going to heaven? <laughs> the guy said, well, yes, I am as a matter of fact. He said, well, I just didn't know, but I'm so excited about going to heaven. I, I just have to tell everybody about heaven. Now, oh, folks, can you see it? It's full of God's spirit. And people saw and they couldn't believe he was even the same man because of the change that had taken place. Folks, when people see you, would their testimony be like Bobby Ford's name and say, well, man, I, I take care of all my problems. I'm taking care of my grief. I'm taking care of my por uh, pornography or whatever it might be. I take care of all those things, so I don't really need God. And so I'm really better than anybody in the church. Wow. I'll say. But when people saw Bobby, they knew he had been changed. And they could see God. First thing when he got saved, he said, you need to talk to Amy back there. And I said, why is that? He said, she may tell you she's saved, but she is, and she don't have what I have. <laughs> He's just been saved for five minutes. He's telling that the back letter to Christ. Well, he baptized seven of his family members in one service. But what am I trying to say, folks? To get full of God's spirit. We might say, well, I've only been saved for 25 years, and I just haven't had time to get full of the Holy Spirit yet. <laughs> You know, but one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to just let God fill me up just completely. Uh, but not, not quite yet. Just, you know, I need to know a little bit more about it. Folks, how sad. It, it is a shame that many times we see people that get saved, that they have more excitement about the things of God than people have been saved for a long time. And folks, think about reality. If we've been saved for a long time. We should be even more fuller, if you please. We, Learn all these wonderful things about our God. Well, all those thoughts in mind. Simply ask you this question Are you a God filled individual? And, and I know it's really, I'm asking a very personal question. I mean, that's between you and God. And I am pastor, so I can kind of enter in there a little bit, maybe. Is there anything greater to be filled with than? 
what people tell me from time to time. Preacher, you just full of blood hot air. <laughs> and uh, that's probably uh, more, a lot more truth in their life than it. But I love it when someone says, Preacher, do you really are the full of God? I can really see God in you. And folks, I wish I could tell you, that happens every day. <laughs> Don't ask me to count because I could count them all in one hand probably. How many times have been confronted with that question or with that statement, you're full of God. But again, I can't make it a higher coffee. And, and the thing is, that's so pleasing to God. I, I don't know about you, but wouldn't you like to help God have a good day? And you can, and we should. And God will do everything he can to help us to help him have a good day, if that makes sense. It's amazing what God can do with you, what he can do with us. It's a matter of saying, okay, God, forgive me. Your will be done. And we'll be able to take that away. Would you stand to your feet as we begin our invitation? Lord, thank you for this time. We can come together and study your word. And help us to truly examine ourselves. And Lord, I, I realize that so many times we just get full of ourselves. And, and sometimes it's such a gradual thing we don't realize how far we've gotten away from you. Lord, help us to reflect on times when we could think or remember that we were just so close to you. And it just seemed like you were so close to us. And yet we failed to realize that you're not the one that moved. We're the ones that moved. We moved away from you. And Lord, help us to want to restore that relationship with you. Help us to want to be filled with your spirit. Lord, help us to be the Christian that we need to be. Help us to be the example or in sample to others. Lord, help us to truly be a Jesus person. Help us to live up to the, the title, the, the name of Christian, to be Christ-like. Lord, forgive us for our selfishness. Forgive us for the many times that we have done our own thing. Lord, help us. Help us to live for heaven now. Pray again, Lord, if there's anybody under the sound of our voice that's never asked you to forgive them of their sins, we pray that they'll repeat the simple childlike prayer with me and say, Dear God, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. May they pray that in faith. And Lord, if they've just gotten away from you, may they just pray something to this faith. Lord, please help me to root out whatever it is in my life that's keeping away from you. Help me, Lord, to get rid of any bitterness or sin and replace it with your love. For we ask this in your son's precious name. Amen. God bless you. Go have a great week. And let's do what we can to help others to find Christ as their Savior this week. Okay.